Well, he's probably the biggest fraudster that you've actually never heard of until now. Alan Metcalf took $49 million from Australians, including hundreds of hopeful mum and dad investors, promising plans for a company that would be bigger than Google. That's more than twice the amount of money that Sydney con woman Melissa Caddick stole from her unsuspecting victims as well. Now, a News Corp investigation is following the money trail left behind by Metcalf, who passed away in 2017. Behind this investigation is news.com.au's finance and investigative reporter Alex Turner-Cohen. Alex, lovely to have your company this morning. Uh, Metcalf was from the Gold Coast. He had links to former US President Donald Trump. He wasn't exactly a shrinking violet, but how did he fly under the radar for 50 years? Yeah, that's a really good question um, and something that we've been looking into for about a year ourselves now. Um, but something I've kind of found out through this process is that he actually didn't fly under the radar, but because it was pre-internet, a lot of this stuff wasn't easy to find. So a lot of the investors believed he was a really successful businessman. That's how he sold himself. That's what he put out there on the web for everyone to find. But when we dug in deeper, he had actually been um, publicly um, called out in parliament and in newspapers dating all the way back to the 60s. But this this was all in archives. So a lot of the people who were trying to invest with him in the 2000s would have had no idea and no reason to really look into that because he seemed like a really trustworthy person. They were hearing about it from their friends and family who'd already invested. So it, there was no reason for them to think that they should have been looking in those places. Wow, it's interesting, isn't it? And a point you make there about pre-internet as well and the, his ability to sort of get away with this for so long. Um, what about ASIC's attempts to stop him? Yeah, so that's a really good question and something else that we're probing. But he did actually get very heavily onto ASIC's radar, which is quite difficult when there's so many businesses out there and they pick very carefully who they want to look into. But they actually did investigate him in 2016 and 2017. They raided his offices and his home multiple times with the, the help of the Australian Federal Police. And they took computers and documents from his offices um, after a number of members of the public alerted ASIC to what was happening. Um, but while this was going on, he actually died suddenly of a heart attack. And so that's something we're looking into now as well. Um, was that linked to the investigation? And some people are unsure if he's even truly dead um, because of the convenient timing of all oh. this. Um, yeah, he actually died three days after he sent an email to ASIC and just a month after they raided all of his workplaces and home. So that's something else that we're looking into at the moment as well. Wow, how interesting is that? I mean, what actually happened to the $49 million and the poor victims, um, most of what I said before, mum and dad investors, how distressing for them. Did they ever get any sort of reprieve from this? No, so they've had no closure, um, no idea where any of the money's gone. There's at least 600 investors that we know of. Um, and we know someone who put in $1.5 million from Western Australia. Um, somebody else put in $300,000 of his family's fortune. Um, and they still don't know what's happened to their money. They never received any financial reports or any breakdown of where it went. Um, and then when they really started to question this and wonder where it had gone, Alan Metcalf passed away and they were left with no answers. And it's now been seven years since he died and the money trail hasn't quite gone cold, we've found, when we've been looking into it. Some stuff has been happening, um, you know, as recently as in the last few years where businesses have finally been deregistered. Um, so that's something we're definitely investigating. And we've found links to um, really notorious places like the British Virgin Islands and the Cayman Islands. Um, and he also had links to Russia in the 1990s. Um, so there's, there's a lot of places where it could have gone and we've been looking into where it could have also ended up. Um, and yeah, a lot of the investors were not aware of any of this until we started looking into it ourselves. Mm. Oh, and it's life ruining that amount of money to lose that. Um, it would be horrific to come back from that and so distressing. Um, you mentioned there that he used the Cayman Islands. Do you think it's possible that others are out there like Metcalf still doing the same thing today? Would they have the ability to sort of avoid detection in the society that we live in today? Yeah, so 100%. So actually just last week, um, the, the inquiry into ASIC concluded um, 
the politicians had been looking into our corporate regulator ASIC for 18 months and concluded that it's gotten worse, not better, over the years um, and that they're too soft on white-collar crime. So there's definitely other people out there right now who are ripping people off, probably mum and dad investors, people who aren't exactly sure what their rights are and what they should be looking into. And, um, yeah, people are recommending that our corporate regulator actually get broken up into different parts because it's just not doing enough. It's only making 150 official investigations a year when there's more than 10,000 businesses in Australia. And if you think about that, this Alan Metcalf guy would have just been one of those 10,000 businesses. So they need to do more so that other people don't lose their life savings, their superannuation, their retirement funds, which is what a lot of people lost through this scheme. Yeah, it's super interesting, isn't it? And sort of when you lift the lid on this, you wonder how many more people out there have been for, oh, a fallen victim to people like Alan Metcalf. Um, Alex, thanks so much for your time. And for our viewers, if you would like to listen to the Missing 49 Million podcast and read more about the investigation, you can head over to news.com.au. Alex, thanks for your time today.